Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Wave one, two, and I think mostly three are done. So we're taking a look at the top free agents left for the Dallas Cowboys to spend that cheap, cheap $1 million deal they love to do. J.K. Dobbins is next up here, and there's no bigger upside play of the available free agents than J.K. Dobbins. The issue is he's barely played football the past three years. One game, eight games, zero games. When he has been out there, he's been explosive. But after a torn ACL and a torn Achilles, you have no idea what he's really going to offer you in 2024. He is a vet minimums contract signing that with incentives if you want, and it's, hey, if something great happens, cool, but you can't bank on him. Now, Dalvin Cook has linked his way to the Cowboys by following some Cowboys content creators, not me. He also didn't block me, so maybe all my Dalvin Cook tweets, uh, didn't, he didn't see those. Uh, and liking tweets about the Cowboys. He was bad last year, though. Like, I had warned everyone, like, he's not the same player. He might fall apart. Don't go after him. Don't go after him. And then he was even worse than I thought he was going to be. And typically, as backs age, they don't suddenly get better after regressing. That's a no from me, dog. Now, we will have Cowboys videos for you when they make more moves. They, they still have to, plus, you know, the draft stuff that they actually will do things in. Hit that sub button so you don't miss out. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. A Boise State boy. We know how much the Cowboys love those players. Alexander Madison is next up here. 3.9 yards per carry, though, is very much replacement level production, if a bit below replacement level production. Uh, cut by the Vikings. Wouldn't impact that this comp pick formula that the Cowboys covet so much. They've got two fives and a six as of now. Um, but he could be your early down back. You still need help, though. Third down back option, Clyde edwards Alaire, former first-round pick. Maybe wasn't a great scheme fit in Kansas City. Um, you're banking on 2020 results or something closer to it or maybe 2021, but he was also not very good in 2023. That's why all these guys are, are pretty much vet men signings. Now, Jared McKinnon, who, by the way, played with Mike Zimmer in, in Minnesota briefly, uh, does stand out as another third down back option, missed some time due to injuries. What you could do is like have Jarek McKinnon and like Deuce Vaughn, you know, compete for a role uh, as a third down back. Maybe that could make some sense if McKinnon wants to sign that veteran salary benefit thing the Cowboys love so much. So name a free agent who you guys want to sign. It's the pinned comment on today's video. The ad comes here on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Deonta Foreman is next up, and, and look, he has shown promise in years past in a smaller role. I think this might be a player that me and other media and fans are higher on in the NFL because he's never really gotten the chance. But if you want that like early down back and draft a speedy guy to pair with him, I think Foreman might be the best of the available options out there. I do have to put Zeke on here. Uh, I don't want to go down this path. You know, I don't, I'd take him over Dalvin Cook pretty easily. My concern here is that if you bring Zeke back, you know, the Joneses are going to force the ball into his hands. Uh, bring him back on a one-day contract to a tire whenever that ends up being. But I think there is a different player with ties or that was actually better than what we have or could get at this stage in Zeke. He's not going to get any better. The numbers continue to drop off. I, I think that that, that race is, has been run. But I do believe in democracy. So would you bring back Ezekiel Elliott? Why for yes and for no. We will mention some Cowboys players on this list. And Rico Dowdle was just as efficient, if not more so, in pretty much every metric you're angling even the short yardage stuff, than Ezekiel Elliott was this past season. And I think he offers you a little bit more juice than Zeke does at this stage. You also can't enter week one with Dowdle as RB1. So you definitely need to get some more help there at the running back position. Let's go to defensive tackle now. Jonathan Hankins. The DT market in general has been a wild one. Uh, it has been a very aggressively moving market with a lot of players signing, etc. Hankins is among the better 
if not the best, for this team at least, nose guard unsigned. Calais Campbell is kind of in that journeyman, uh, you know, searching for a ring phase as, as best as, as possible. Uh, played pretty well for the Falcons. Could do some base defensive end DT stuff for you, give you some size. He got paid a lot last year from Atlanta. Might be looking for something similar this offseason. Tyre Tarts will visit with the Bengals, by the way. Keep an eye out for that one. Uh, the body type says he's not a great run stopper, but he actually is a very good one there. Uh, weird year in Tennessee. Kind of got himself cut with complaining and stuff there. But I think with your nose guard options, it gets real thin real quick. So you should explore Tart if this team wants to make the calls to others as opposed to others calling them. Puna Ford didn't play a ton last year. He's a nose guard option. Um Stands out as, as a Texas guy and probably wouldn't be, be that expensive either. John Jenkins, I believe, is going to be with the Dolphins, uh, by the way. Had a lot of tackles for the Raiders. Kind of a shockingly uh, large amount there for a nose guard. Big boy in the middle, right? You want that veteran nose guard. You don't bring back Hankins. You know, maybe Jenkins stands out as a fit. If you haven't already, you know, we're like seven minutes into the show. You clearly like what we're doing. So hit that sub button for more free Dallas Cowboys YouTube videos every single day. There will be an update at some point on Tyron Smith. I would really like to find a way to keep him. Um, I would really enjoy getting him onto this roster again for one more year, run it back. Hope you guys didn't get got by that, uh, that, that fake Tyron Smith account. Come on, it was, it was obviously not him. Uh, but I'm worried about the Jets going after him. So some swing tackles then that maybe could be stopgap starters. Josh Jones, former earliest round draft pick, did not grade it out very well from PFF, but there was a run blocking thing he was banged up to. I've seen some flashes there. Again, I'm not, I'm setting my expectations low on a lot of these names. Trent Brown's played both left tackle and right tackle. The concern here is, I think, I don't know if football character is the right word for it, but he made a lot of disparaging comments about his old coaching staff. And I don't know if you guys have ever hired somebody, um, but when they're out there clearly bad-mouthing their last bosses, that typically doesn't go over well with a potential new boss. I think just, that's just like, uh, that's just a red flag. Whether the player was right or not, they don't normally like that. So his market might be a bit deflated as a result. Now, David Bakhtiari, I don't know if he can play football anymore. Uh, I w I, people will ask about him, so I will mention him. But the medicals might be to be a red flag, slash maybe he goes to play with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe he's a, a, uh, is a cabinet member for Aaron Rodgers and the RFK uh, presidential run. Andres Peets, Saints, got some guard tackle flexibility, former first-round pick. Again, it's not a great option. Maybe you've heard of him, but the results... The sacks, he kind of got benched at points. It's, I am scraping the barrel here along the offensive line. Kendall Lamb played uh, pretty decently for a Dolphins team that was banged up along the offensive line. Wouldn't mind bringing him back if I could find a way to make that one happen, uh, given, again, just some left side, right side flexibility. Connor Williams. Uh, the ACL tear is a massive red flag at this stage. However... Um, he played really well last year at center, like really good. Uh, maybe the medical makes him wait longer to sign somewhere. That stands out as a, a reunion that could actually make some sense if the penalties stay lower like they were. Outside of one year in Dallas, everyone got big mad. Just saying. Not many guards I like. Uh, Dalton Reisner stands out here. Guy I really wanted last year. I, over, I overvalued him, but he can still start for you. You know, is he better than TJ Bass? Maybe, but you know, it gives a Bass Hoffman competition at center. Riser in there at left guard. Let's Bass work as a right guard backup too. I think it can make some sense. Jake Curran is next up here. Not tendered by Seattle. I put him in here because of obvious ties to Mike Solari and Seattle. Now, what do you think is the biggest need for the Dallas Cowboys? Go ahead and sound off for me in the comment section. Uh, one rule. Can't say coach or GM. Got to pick a position. It's a Michigan guy, but you'll forget about because he played for the Chiefs already. 
Uh, Michael Dana has done some nice things in KC. It can do some run-stopping stuff for you as well. Under the radar piece that I think could fit as a backup base end uh, behind Demarcus Lawrence. Yannick Ngakwe, I think, is a perfect number three, number four edge for a team like Dallas. Don't ask him to stop the run a bunch. Just, you know, let him be a pass rusher. Pay him a couple million dollars. Don't have him be a full-time player. His numbers have begun to dip. But I think you can plug him in there as, you know, Sam Williams, ace, and Yannick Ngakwe, B, behind uh, Dante, or behind Micah and Tank Lawrence, and you let him go get sacks. I think that edge veteran sack pursuer makes sense for this team. Manuel Ogba falls in a similar category as some of these guys. Uh, had been linked to Dallas previously. Didn't have his best year in Miami. But if you can sign someone and get you five to six sacks for a couple million dollars, that's a pretty good return on your investment. Bud Dupree. You notice a trend here? Veteran aging pass rusher to come basically replace Dante Fowler. That's, that's what I'm aiming for with this particular move. Carl Lawson is a player I've long liked. Now, injuries have sapped him, and he was kind of lost in the sauce to an extent uh, of a deep Jets pass rushing room that is now no longer as deep. Barely played last year. Seven sacks, though, in 2022. Uh, Bengals for a long time there, so there should, in theory, be just enough overlap between you know Paul Gunther knowing some guys on that Bengals staff that had Carl Lawson. I think there's enough of a connection that they could at least do some due diligence there. Uh, again, a couple sacks. Uh, maybe this might be a vet minimum deal. I have interest. I have to put him in here. It's Odell Beckham Jr. I don't love it. Uh, you know, the play has not been great. There's obviously no 2022 campaign on there either. Uh, showed some flashes at times with the Ravens. I don't think he's better than Brandon Cooks. I don't think he's better than, than CeeDee Lamb. He'll make some plays for you. The Ravens did not use him uh, in the... Um, in the playoff run that much, as maybe the way they should have. So he'll probably get linked at some point. That's how it works. The medicals did not come back very well the last time. I think that's, that's a big-time red flag. So you want Odell Beckham on the Cowboys. OBJ for yes or no BJ for no. The Cowboys have, of course, brought back Jordan Lewis. I would like to go get Stephon Gilmore still. I would like to find a way to retain him on my roster. Uh, veteran corner on the outside, I still think makes sense. Then you don't have to draft somebody at all, even if you don't need to. And you can buy more time for Eric Scott to grow. Patrick Peterson, he knows Mike Zimmer very well. He played some safety, by the way, for the Steelers this past year. Uh, worth mentioning, given how long he spent under Mike Zimmer in some previous seasons. Some other names, again, we'll go quickly on these here. Trey White. Injury red flags, missed more games than he's played the past three years. Maybe a post-draft signing for somebody. Xavier Howard, cut with a failed physical designation, by the way, red flag there, has shown playmaking ability, had been hypothetically linked to the Cowboys previously. If you don't retain Gilmore, that could be an option as, as a cheap veteran outside piece. Some by-low names here, at least one of them, is Christian Fulton of the Tennessee Titans. Um, did not have a good 2023. This is a by-low rehab uh, candidate and see if Mike Zimmer can fix him. Adoree Jackson has some speed. I think could still do some inside-outside stuff for you. A uh, bit better than some of the other games on this list, but I'm very curious how much he ends up getting from somebody on the open market. Another buy-low option is C.J. Henderson, the former first-round pick. He has really been a disappointment, but Mike Zimmer's a quarterback guy, so maybe they will be able to uh, you know, fix him. Again, this, this should be no more than a vet minimum signing. Justin Simmons, the Broncos' safety. I bet he's going to be too expensive, but at least pick up the phone. The Cowboys don't want to pick up the phones, but... You can, you can make Simmons fit. I'm only going bigger name at safety, by the way. Quandre Diggs on this list. 95 tackles, one interception, five pass breakups. Uh, he, was, he has shown some signs of decline, but he's smart enough to fit in the Mike Zimmer scheme. And you knew I had to make Jamal Adams an option, right? I don't want to because I have safeties who actually are linebackers. 
the lack of blitzing that the, the, the team did for him didn't make much sense. He can still help somebody. I just think the Cowboys are in okay enough shape to not go after Jamal Adams.